Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Taking the temperament of the young in this country, if I were to go today, I will go with my head unbowed and my faith unshakable that a new Gambian is being nurtured, a new Gambian who will be able to build a new Gambian. Honorable Speaker, 2016 by this time we had the impasse. We had the power of the outgoing president and the power of an incoming president. made possible by a group of people who all had the right to seek the mandate of the people, decided to sit down to discuss and eventually chatted to establish agreement and even committees. And the committees worked to establish programs and the programs were eventually adopted that we will have a transitional president for the fundamental objective of putting an end to self-perpetuating rule. That was the project for three years, to put an end to self-perpetuating rule, so that after three years there will be elections and all Gambians would have been united Radio, TV, educate all of us so that sovereignty resides in all of us. We'll be able to in make informed choices. None of us will be a tool. None of us will be a cannon further to other human beings. It will own himself, herself. And we go for elections and then determine the term to establish a term limit. That was the project. Some people are telling me that that project is what is creating a crisis today. What type of mentality? People worked out to create change, but a change that will nurture democracy. That was the object. Who betrayed that struggle? Point accusing fingers at yourselves. Did you really believe in the project? Why did it fail if you really believed in it? So what is important, Honorable Speaker, now, people are talking about insults. People are becoming very light, light, light skinned. Honorable Speaker, insults are chaff in the wind. They do not define the ambassador of truth. They define the hate speech and the hate monger. What Gambia needs now is to look at the future. And what is that future? The future, Honorable Speaker, lies in three fundamental principles. There is power, there is right, there is law. Rights help us to be able to scrutinize power, restrain it, and control it. That is why anybody can exercise right, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to protest, form, form unions. Those are rights. Individual rights, group rights. They should be recognized. But, Honorable Speaker, if we look at the situation very clearly, those rights and power are also controlled by law. And then you have democracy. The power of the people must be recognized based on law. We agreed three years, only possible under the Gambian Constitution under Section 65, resignation. But the normal mandate is five years. See, if you have a contract with someone and he said, I no longer recognize the contract, then the law comes. Does the law permit that person to go three years or five years? 
What National Assembly members, leaders of parties should tell the people is that the law is saying that you have five years and the five years, if you have betrayed a confidence of three years, when the five years comes, that is the red line. You must respect that red line, and if you pass that red line, the power of the people and the power of the law will ring on your head. That's why we gave Jamme a chance to be here until the 18th of January. And that's what the world supported. So your project was betrayed by who? Draw the right lessons. So essentially, what is important, Honorable Speaker, is to understand that the Gambia that we now have is heading towards 20th January. What are you going to do on the 20th January? If the person in power says, I will not go. Are you going to overthrow him? Be honest. If you are going to overthrow him, tell him you are going to overthrow him. Don't fool the young people and give the impression that there is a provision there where you are going to be able to remove that person and only other means than to overthrow him. Are you throwing accusing fingers at people who will say that they will not participate in the overthrow of a government? Who is opposing to protest? Who is not protesting more vigorously than you people about what is wrong? But let me tell you, those people who combine to bring about the change cannot be insulted. Those people who combine to bring about the change must be respected. No matter what the betrayal is. Because they effected a chain that no one could bring. And a chain that was necessary. And the chain that has brought you here today. That chain has made it possible for people to leave Europe and to visit the Gambia and go back at their will. That is the chain that brought it. No matter our differences, we knew the difficulties. We knew the life-threatening moments they had to face. I wish the Inspector General of Police former who is now minister was here on the 20th at the bidding of the president i had to contact him he was in charge of the security chiefs what do you say now and the answer was we are ready we are no longer with an unconstitutional authority we are with the constitutional authority when is he going to leave well we believe very soon but we'll also take our decision So essentially, force was coming in, and war was coming in, and the chain defeated all what would have brought death and destruction to the country. And we transferred power. So now, we have a country that we own. No foreign power is dictating to us. Do you want us to now squabble among ourselves for foreign powers to come back and dictate to us? And tell us how to mend our houses? We have created a national assembly with absolute power to call ministers, to call the vice, is this a vice, her excellent vice president, to come here and say, speak for the president. Otherwise, we will not listen to you. And that was done. That is the power of this assembly. Power we should recognize. And others are talking about powers of protesters. You have the power to summon presidents and ministers to appear before you. You have all that power. And you are appearing powerless. And you appear to be conscious. You say you are wise. You are mature. Where is your maturity? We have power to impeach the president. But that constitution was changed by the very parliament that is here by National Assembly members, giving the power of the President to be able to dissolve the National Assembly. To weaken your powers, so we can now only fight. You try to impeach him, he also dissolves. Who is going to who? 
That's your constitution. And you don't read your constitution. You don't understand your constitution. And you want to teach and call people ignorant. So, Honorable Speaker, let's bear in mind our situation. Honorable Speaker, 71.3 billion is the debt of this country. 81.5% GDP. 48% are living in abject poverty, Honorable Speaker. 543,000 children are in our school system. They'll come out. How are they going to live? Honorable Speaker, look at our farmers. People complain and complain. What is the solution? You need a bank that will give the farmer fertilizer seed farming implements to produce and free himself from poverty. You have your villages 54 years. Which village has a treasury? You are beggars. Each village should have a treasury. What the village pays goes into the treasury. Each village should have means of production, land, aquaculture. The farm cooperative bank will give the village what it needs to produce and put it in the village farm to provide milling machines, to provide water, to provide health facilities. The answers are there. That is the debate. Young people, every, I went to Kigali, honorable speaker, and every young person wants to be an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur without the means of production. Come out of GTTI with the knowledge. Who gives you a milling machine to be able to process? Who gives you a welding machine to be able to work? That's what you need. Anybody who is trained will also be given a means of production chain to the production system. 2.4 billion is what is spent on rice. When we can produce the rice, when we can get our young people employed in processing that rice, when we can get others, women who want to sell, we can give them the seed money to be able to buy, to also sell it. We can produce our own houses. You don't have answers to the problem of the country. And all we talk about is protest, protest, but who is against protesting? That's a right. No one can deny it. Who is denying it? Why should that be an issue? The issue is not about protest. The issue is, are we going to overthrow a government or not on the 20th? That is the issue. And make your declaration. Halifa Salah has been here. A government was overthrown in 1994. We say we will not participate in a government that takes power at the back of the people. We will never participate in a government that takes power from the back of the people. That is our stand. That is democracy. And we managed to change your government through the organized force of the people. That is democracy. Nobody will mislead the Gambian people. And now I'm going to be far more honorable speaker and maybe even resign from this parliament to become independent. You will see who have a greater voice and who have moral authority to speak. Nobody has more moral authority to speak than my very self. I'm not interested in your pomp and privilege, not in your white houses and red houses or your parliaments. All I desire in life is for the African people, Gambian people, to be free from poverty, to take charge of their destiny. And nobody can stop that. This process is on. Nobody can reverse it. I can assure you that. What we must now do is to sit down, and I will end there, Honorable Speaker. Oh, I was going to give you two minutes to wrap up. Thank you. I'll round up here, Honorable Speaker, that now it is important for us to respect each other and let's debate and dialogue. I've heard about this, this issue of, uh, uh, Honorable Speaker, uh, the uh, people talking about secular state and the rest. Honorable Speaker, I am ready to go into that constituency, get the Christian and Muslims leaders, move with them in that constituency, and we'll look at this constitution together and look at what secularism means so that people will have knowledge that will unify us as a people. I'll be doing that in the month of January, so that I'll move from place to place, let them speak to the people. At the end of the day, I will explain to them, because there is science of society. And we have surrendered our brains to outsiders, and we believe that Europeans are dictating to us. Members of parliaments are here at the ACP-EU. 
I was there with the Europeans. We talked about homosexuality. How did I treat it? Who questioned what I said? No, a single European parliamentarian dared to question what I said because it's rooted in knowledge. If we are going to be safe as a people, we must seek knowledge and we must awaken our people. The African people, the Gambian people are awakened. Nobody will take them to sleep again. They are now ready to talk and nobody will silence them. But Your ignorance will not up. lead. It is knowledge that will lead. Your time is up. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Honorable members, I've... Pardon? Yes, yes. yes.